All right, today I'm going to give you the rundown on an HVAC multimeter. We're going to turn it to volts AC first, and we're going to turn the light on just so you can see what we're doing. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to test this plug end right here. We're going to read 122.6 volts, so that is good. We can then go ahead and check the frequency, and that should be roughly 60 hertz. Okay. If it's off by too much, uh, then you would need to call the electric company. All right. So we're going to go ahead and press the Hertz button again to get back to where we were. And now we're going to press the Select button. And that's going to change it to a straight line here, and that indicates DC voltage. Okay. The first one that we're going to test is this 9-volt battery. Okay. We get 8.24 volts, which is that's pretty far off. That's more than 5% off of 9 volts, so that battery is bad. This one, we're going to check this one. It's a 9-volt battery, and it reads 9.9 .9 volts. So it's uh, well over 9, so that is that is good. All right. Now we're going to go ahead over to what looks like to be an upside-down horseshoe. That is the sign for resistance. All right. We're going to get these out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and test this fan motor. This fan motor came out of a microwave. And we're going to read what it says. 29.1 ohms of resistance to electrical flow. Okay, So that motor is good. If the motor was spinning while you took a resistance reading, the resistance reading would be off. And if you got OL like you have right now, then that means that this winding here is burned apart. If you got 0, 0.00 ohms of resistance to electrical flow, then that means that this coil is actually burnt together. Okay, So that is good. Now we're going to go to continuity, which is the speaker button. And if you were to put these two probes together like that, it would make that noise, indicating that you have a closed electrical circuit. For resistance and continuity, you would want to disconnect your wiring first or your component first, and that is good. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead over to MFD, all right, and we're going to test a capacitor. You can either use a 10,000 ohm resistor or, um, in the case of one MFD to say 90 MFD capacitors used for HVAC, you can go ahead and short them out. You want to short them out with a screwdriver that does not have a chrome paint on it. Okay, now that that's shorted out, we're going to go ahead and take our microfarad reading. The capacitor may say UF, and that is just a manufacturer sign, but it does mean MFD. All right. You got to give it about 10 seconds. Now it says 10.19 microfarads, and that is. Uh, within 5% of the rating, and it's above, so that is good. Right. Now we're going to turn it to A for amps. All right, and you're going to go ahead and put it around the hot wire. You can put it around the hot or the common wire, but it's very important that you see that I put that around that while there was no power going through it for safety. Okay, we read 0.43 amps. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the light bulb off, and then I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the multimeter for safety once again. All right, we're going to go to Fahrenheit and Celsius. We have a temp sensor, which we can put in, and our reading here on our thermocouple end is 53 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. And the last one that we can do is NCV, which is non-contact voltage. All right, if you put this meter next to a wire that's live, it'll make that noise. That's it. Stay safe.